And welcome back to part two. So in this video, you should have already installed a Vagrant box to your computer. And the next step is to start installing Laravel Homestead. But before I do that, I just wanna double check that I've got a Vagrant box on my computer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in this command here, which is Vagrant box list. And this is going to return a list of all the Vagrant boxes on my computer. At the moment, I should only have the one, which is uh, Laravel Homestead VirtualBox 7.1 or something similar, right? And now let's take a look at the installation process. So if I take a look at the this command here, I'm gonna be running a git command that clones Homestead down to my computer in the root directory, um, and it's gonna create a folder called Homestead. Now you wanna be mindful of that because you might want to just have a little bit more structure to what you're actually doing to the root directory of your computer. So instead of cloning this directly down to uh, Homestead, I'm actually going to clone this down to a folder called projects instead. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna modify that line. So let's copy this and paste that into the terminal. And I guess we can just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see. But all I'm gonna do is add in a projects folder over here. Okay, and that's going to clone the homestead directory or homestead files into projects homestead. Okay, so now I should have, uh, if I ls, I should have a project or a folder called projects. So let's cd into that. And we also wanna cd into the homestead directory. And that's as per the documentation says here. So once we've done that, the next thing you wanna do is run bash init.sh or if you're on a Windows computer, init.bat. So make sure you pick the correct command for your uh, operating system. So let's type bash init.sh and now we can see that Homestead has been initialized. So that means Homestead's actually ready to be started, but there's a couple things that we need to do. Uh, and I am gonna get into a lot more detail uh, on this in uh, future videos. So not the next video, but the one after that. But for now, uh, let's just take a look at this uh, config. So we've got to open up homestead.yaml, which is going to be in the homestead folder that we just cloned down to our computer. So let's open and let's go over to projects, homestead, and we can just open up this entire directory in our IDE. And what I'm gonna do is find the homestead.yaml file. So let's open that. And I guess we can make this a little bit bigger so we can read this. Uh, but basically what this is doing is just configuring our homestead environment. So we're getting an IP address, some memory, some CPUs, and none of this stuff actually has to be changed except for maybe if you are using a different provider. So I'm using VirtualBox, I installed VirtualBox and by default homestead also comes set up with VirtualBox as the provider. The next step here is uh, we can see that we've got some uh, public and private keys on our in our configuration. So we also have to generate these public and private keys onto our computer. Now the documentation doesn't really do a good job of mentioning that at the exact right space. So uh, yeah, what we need to do now is actually run uh, this command um, and this will be fine, which is just uh, ssh key gen dash t rsa, and then u at homestead would be fine. So let's hit enter, and that's going to ask you um, where you wanna save this, so that the default location is fine, just go ahead and hit enter. Uh, we can also just uh, leave our passphrase empty, and that will have generated uh, some ID RSA keys, and it should have generated them in the exact right place they need to be anyway. So uh, if you take a look at these uh, spaces on your computer, you should find an ID underscore RSA file. But now that uh, we've done that, the next step is to, I'm just gonna type clear to get rid of all the stuff in the terminal, but the next step is to actually start our Vagrant machine. Uh, and when we do that, this is going to, by default, um, map any files in the code directory to, uh, in the code directory of our computer to the code directory on our Vagrant machine. Um, 
And if we take a look at the next line here, this is sites. So this is gonna map homestead.test to this directory on our, uh, in our Vagrant machine. Now, I think I actually wanna change some of these defaults uh, just because, uh, yeah, what's the point in setting up a, a site called homestead? So let's set up something called qcasts.test and I'm gonna map that to home Vagrant code, but because I wanna map multiple projects to this Laravel or this Homestead installation. I'm not only gonna be using it for one Laravel project, I'll probably use a couple. Uh, I'm gonna add in the name of my project just here between code and public. So let's name add in the name QCasts here. And I'm also gonna set up a database called QCasts, which is for this site. So we've got a database, we've got a site. Uh, now all we need to do is set up these folders so they get mapped correctly. Uh, so what I wanna do is in the uh, projects directory, so let's cd back one directory, let's create a directory here called code. So mkdir uh, code. And now if I ls, anything that is in this code directory is gonna be mapped to our Vagrant machine and anything that gets put into our Vagrant machine in that code directory is gonna be mapped back to our computer and it's gonna happen really quickly. Uh, so that's basically what uh, what this, uh, these three lines of code basically do. They're just mapping uh, the, this code directory on your computer to the Vagrant computer or Vagrant box. And I think I've probably over explained that a little bit. So now that we've done that, let's CD back into the Homestead directory and I'm going to run Vagrant up and this should start our Vagrant machine without any hitches bringing up the machine, awesome. Okay, so if you've done everything correctly, your machines should start provisioning and this does actually take um, a good 20 minutes to run, maybe even an hour, uh, depending on how fast your computer is. So I'm gonna end the video off here and I'll see you guys in the next one. And that is the end of the video. So if you made it this far, there's a couple things that you can do to help me. First of all, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment saying something nice, hopefully. Share this video with your friends because all of that stuff is gonna help my channel grow and I'm also feeling a little lonely. So don't forget to follow me on social media.